Should Indian youth worry about the flood of technologies? Is India not producing enough technology entrepreneurs? This special episode of ICT Academy Dialogue brings answers to these questions from Dr. Venkatesh R., the Chief Scientist, TCS Research and Development Center. Hello all, welcome to this ICT Academy Dialogue session. Uh, we have with us a uh, great expert, uh, the Chief Scientist uh, at TCS, uh, uh, Mr. Venkatesh. Uh, hello, sir. Hi. Uh, what makes interesting uh, to you in this last 30 years journey to continue in this uh, innovation space? Uh, what has been really interesting has been the rapid change in uh, ideas, in technologies, in applications. The way more recently, the changes that machine learning has brought in, the way it has opened up possibilities. And that has all brought, up, brought forth new problems and new challenges for us to solve. And that's always been interesting. So innovation, you know, people talk about innovation, that too, more into IT industry. And now we talk about uh, the Industry 4.0. In Industry 4.0, which is one technology that you feel is going to change the future? I think machine learning in its current form and especially if there is any new breakthroughs in uh, the areas of machine learning, that's going to really change the way business applications are developed and the way businesses interact with their customers, especially in the way they are more personal, personalized to individual customer needs. So, so do you think that will impact uh, the talent uh, requirements? That will greatly impact talent requirements. What you are going to see from talent is we need people who can be very creative, who can express their thought processes and express how problems, they solve problems so that they can train machines to solve the same problems. And they can, how customers behave, they should be able to imagine, empathize with customers. Emotional quotient is going to become very critical. How people think, how people behave, how people interact, the ability to understand all that is going to be very critical. The ability to express that in a rigorous form so that machines can do that is going to be very good. Now, it's been, it's been 30 years, a long journey for you as a professional. I'm sure you wouldn't have learned all these things when you were doing college. It, it was totally different. Absolutely. So, how did you keep pace with uh, the growth, technological growth? I think uh, what has been key is two things. One is a very high degree of interest that I had in the changes going changes, be it changes in programming languages, be it changes in technologies and understanding why those changes were taking place, understanding how those changes are impacting us. Even now, machine learning is a very, very interesting area, very exciting. It's to know how well it can do in relation to human thinking, human, how close it can come. There are areas where it performs better. That's always very interesting and exciting. And as a result, I kept pace by either reading the latest about the latest developments in form of research papers and keeping up to date through even news, media technology news forums. And also try to incorporate that in the work, keeping ensuring that the work changes to keep pace with the changing environment. Okay, well, to be more specific, uh, you now can you just indicate us uh, how will your, how will your day be? How will your day be? Because uh, you are in a most uh, serious uh, position within the company, you will also have to keep pace uh, with the technological growth through learning. How are you planning your day? So, from a day perspective, uh, the day will typically involve include a lot of interactions with my colleagues in specific technical problems that they are trying to address or that they are trying to solve. They are all very interesting, which includes. So I'm primarily in the area of verification and validation of programs and uh, proving programs correct is, is the height of human intelligence and to be able to do that. Uh, so now we have several colleagues of mine who are trying very, very different ideas to be able to prove programs correct. Interacting with them in technical details of this is one, is consumes a large part of I also try to read technology news and also try to read papers, technical research paper publications every day to some extent in the areas of interest to me. 
which currently involve machine learning and uh, proving programs. These are the two primary areas. So uh, lifelong learning is uh, needed? Absolutely. Lifelong learning. It's, I would just say it is needed. It's what makes a career a lot of fun okay. and exciting and interesting. And it's important to stay interested. That is key. Then learning automatically. Now, no, more than 3 lakh uh, engineers are coming out of colleges in India and everybody has, will aspire to work with leading companies like yours and uh, things like that. So, what, can you just tell us one or two core skills which they need to develop uh, within their college before they come to your company? I would say, instead of focusing on core skills, they should focus on their core interests and their okay. core strengths hmm. and have a lot of self-belief in following that interest and research how that interest can be translated to something that is useful to society, useful to uh, mankind and then the rest will just follow. Okay. Some company or the other will find value for that strength and they will take them forward. They should try and get out of any herd mentality, be bold enough to try something different. Okay. No, you, you spoke about machine learning as one new area which will change the future. So, machine learning is, uh, as I understand, as a non-technical person, it is going to bring a lot of automation. So, will that uh, affect our job, uh, job market, or will the opportunity be lost by our grads in the future? So, it is not just machine learning, even otherwise, the increased automation is going to affect a large amount of jobs, uh, especially in various uh, areas. So, if you look at uh, India, there are these petrol pumps which are manned by people. Those are jobs which abroad they are working over there because it's all. In fact, the petrol pumps in India are also reasonably automated. We just have people who are manning them. That is similar. There are various such things where jobs are on their way out, and that's a serious concern. And, uh, similarly, so machine learning brings in even among knowledge workers. There are some jobs that will uh, go away because machines can do that, scale up much better than human scale. So if you have certain jobs which need to be addressed at a scale, it's just humans just cannot do it. It will have to be done by machines. So how do you think we should tackle that? So when you say, uh, now the more, the, the huge scale is uh, in certain jobs that will go away. So what is the new jobs that will come? Well, and how there is a lot them? of new jobs that are coming up in which require uh, high skills, high creativity, entertainment industry is a big opening where there is a lot of jobs, fine arts, anything which has creativity, applications of technology, gaming, video gaming is a big, there is a lot of people who are looking for new opportunities. Applications of technology in various fields is still, so there is a, in fact today there are a lot of companies that are looking for talent and not finding them. Okay. So if there are, Appropriately trained, educated people, they would be, there is a lot of jobs for them. So now, uh, do, do you have any message to the teachers? Because the teachers are the very key to produce uh, our graduates, specific to the higher education teachers. So, the message to teachers is also the same as I have, because teaching is also finally a career. Which is half, understand your areas of interest, delve deep into those impart that whatever you have learned because you have dealt deep into those two your students have a passion for your subject pick areas that are of interest to you so that you stay interested throughout your career and follow the rest will just follow okay be bold be creative okay okay so if you have to put one skill which students will have to now try and imbibe for the future is creativity can i say that yeah absolutely and self-belief is uh, something they all need to but it will be difficult for somebody to inculcate the self-belief externally. It has yes, to come it has to come in. But creativity, how do you think? But if they prepare, if they spend a lot of time and effort in learning mm -hmm. the subject of their interest, mm -hmm. then self-belief will naturally follow. Mm -hmm. It's the effort that is needed that needs to be put into mm -hmm. an area of interest to them. No, to inculcate that creativity, that spirit of creativity among students, do you think college can do something? Yes, first thing the colleges need to do is to change their assessment. Mm -hmm. Today all of assessment examines rote learning, assesses rote learning and that needs to change. 
today if a student there is no assessment where it expects a student to be creative that needs to change okay and uh, so if you have your projects if a student is trying out a new idea that should get a lot of weightage mm-hmm. as opposed to has the project been done bug free yet because if it has to be done bug bug free the easiest for them to download source code from somewhere okay. right? mm-hmm. present it okay that so the way you encourage students in their creativity is ask them questions which needs creativity creative thinking ask them questions which have which require them to apply what they have learned as opposed to just reproduce what they have learned so according to you now you are a chief scientist uh, it will be very appropriate to ask you according to you in your uh, you know education you study who whom do you rate as the best teacher and why uh, your teacher i would pick any particular teacher but what i really enjoyed is teachers who brought out insightful teaching for example if it was uh, teaching mechanical uh, physics then people who really they know very complex uh, machines and then simplified it using a simple physics problem to replace all those components by so that really taught you to think in simple terms even to model something very complex that needed imagination and creativity and the questions were also teachers who asked questions of that kind where you study as much as you want to put help open book exams those kind of things now the students in the colleges are actually really confused because of this technology when there are uh, no people those who say you no know, learn data analytics somebody says learn infrastructure somebody says learn programming what is that they should do how do they think do? they do all they need to do is to be good in whatever they do okay it's the ability a high IQ a high ability to solve problems this is what is needed your respective of technology okay so that will help in any field if you want to join politics you need the ability to solve problems yeah. if you want to do join the in the entertainment industry you need the ability to conceive of entertainment that you need to understand the masses mm-hmm. and their tastes and produce high quality content for them so a general skill of ability to think independently is what is needed as opposed to learning any specific technology any specific technology they learn will be outdated in some years okay so they shouldn't be worried too much about the flood of technologies so is that the reason why india is not producing uh, tech entrepreneurs i won't say it is not producing tech entrepreneurs no, compared to the uh, us so there are many indians who are tech entrepreneurs So to say that India is not producing tech entrepreneurs is no, I'm not saying product. not producing. Just say today you name the top top ten. They're not Indian. Head of Microsoft is an Indian. Head okay. of <laughs> so to say that they're not. Indian But we have not produced. We are. We are. We don't have our WhatsApp or Facebook on our own. That's a different issue. That's a matter of time that it will come. But the point is, we do produce tech entrepreneurs. It's not that okay. Whether the country within the country there is an opportunity for tech entrepreneurs to flourish is a different question. And what those reasons are, I don't know. It could be social, it could be economical, whatever it is. But to say that we are not producing is incorrect. Got it, got it, got it. Because now that there is a lot of push on uh, now getting entrepreneurship in India, there are a lot of startups that are coming up, and I'm sure we will have our. So do you, do you think soon we will have our absolute Facebook kind of uh, no, global giant coming through India? We have our Ola's, we have our flip cards. We soon have. Fine, sir. Thank you so much uh, for these uh, interesting uh, yeah. insights. Thank you. I'm sure this will be very much useful to the students and educator to you know help them you know in their progress of uh, making their careers. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching this special episode of ICT Academy Dialogue. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Insta. Thank you.